For many of us, what goes on in North Korea is one big mystery. We have no grasp on what the day-to-day -day lives are like for the people that live there. So we are digging deep and revealing some shocking aspects of what it's like to be a woman in this secretive country. Stay tuned to find out what could cause a woman in North Korea to spend her whole life in a prison camp. New around here? Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more like this. Now, on to the secret lives of North Korean women. Haircuts must be approved. When you are thinking about getting a new haircut, your biggest worry is probably whether it will look good on you. You probably think about which hairstylist will be able to achieve the look you want. You probably even search the internet for a picture of your celebrity hair inspiration to give to the stylist. You do not, however, worry about whether or not the haircut will land you in jail. But that is the reality for the women in North Korea. There are only 28 approved hairstyles in all of North Korea. Women are allowed to choose from 14 of them. The choices are even slimmer if you are not married. Women married must keep their hair short. Single ladies are allowed to wear their hair longer and with curls. Dyeing your hair also seems to be a big no. No, as all of the photos of acceptable hairstyles feature people with black hair. Can you imagine being so restricted that you couldn't even choose your own hairstyle? It must be hard to stand out from the crowd or express your individuality when you are extremely likely to have the exact same hairstyle as everyone else in the room. Then, once you get used Used to your haircut, you have to change it if you get married. Talk about a headache. Hey guys, we are so excited to announce we are producing our own original content. Head over to the Trendy for the best DIYs, fashion tips, makeup hacks, and so much more. We are sure you're going to love it. And be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you there. Hair salons are run by the state. Speaking of hair, not only do you have not much of a choice of how you get your hair done, you also don't have many choices of where to get it done. The hair salons are all run by the state, so of course they are strict followers of the state-mandated hairstyles. Younger people who want to rebel against the regime are beginning to go to hair salons that are run out of homes. These salons are run without official permission from the government, but if you go to one of them, you are more likely to get a hairstyle that you truly desire and not just one of the 14 listed on the approved sheet. We doubt that the hairstyles in the secret salons differ hugely from the approved styles. Going to these hair salons must be a huge risk for the women though. Punishments in North Korea are notoriously brutal. So going to a secret hair salon and getting a hairstyle other than those approved probably doesn't sit so well with the government. We hate to imagine what happens to the women who are caught doing this. But for the girls that go to these secret salons, the risk must be worth it. If not, we doubt they would be putting their freedom on the line. We just aren't sure having a different hairstyle from everyone else is worth the risk. Women can get an education. With such strict rules in North Korea, and women not exactly having equal rights to men, you may think that access to education is also not equal. But actually, education is one of the most important things in North Korea. Of course, the education is controlled by the government. It is mandatory up until the second level. Children attend primary school from age 6 to 9, and then they attend either a regular secondary school or a special secondary school depending on their talents. Children are in secondary secondary school from 10 to 16. Schooling is very important in this country, so it can afford to leave women out of the process. College is not mandatory, however. Women must also enter into the military until they are 23, so at a certain point it becomes very hard for them to do any sort of higher education. So if the question is, are women in North Korea allowed to have an education? The answer is yes, but only to a certain extent. When women are older, their main duties are serving in the military, and then getting married and taking care of the household. So while they can get an education in North Korea, unless women leave, it may not amount to anything. Considering it's really hard to leave the country legally, we can only assume most women in North Korea don't pursue higher education. Weddings are still about the state. In America and many other Western countries, weddings are about the couple involved. It is their day to share their love for each other with the world. The bride usually plans her wedding for months, making sure everything is perfect. On the day of the wedding, all eyes are on the couple, and especially on the bride. In North Korean weddings, the couple is important, but nothing is more important than the state. The government and workers' party are often a part of your wedding. You don't throw a bouquet. Instead, you typically bring flowers to 
the statue of Supreme Leader Kim Il-sung to pay your respects immediately after you are married. In America, people often take their wedding pictures at the wedding venue. In North Korea, the couple takes their pictures in front of the statue where they place the flowers. This is not mandatory, but most couples feel compelled to do it. The state even dictates your wedding date, as it's illegal to get married on April 15th or February 16th since those are the birthdays of former country leaders. So hopefully, if you live in North Korea, you don't have your heart set on getting married on either of those days. With all of these rules and restrictions, it seems like it would be hard for women to have a fairy tale wedding in North Korea. Wedding Traditions As in most countries, the women of North Korea have their own wedding traditions. Most North Korean weddings are still very traditional. The brides usually wear traditional hanbok dresses. Neighbors and family members come and congratulate the newlyweds, and everyone enjoys food and liquor. For poorer couples who can't afford food and other things for the wedding, it is customary to borrow them from the market. The couple will pay to rent the items, take pictures, and then return everything to the market. If the guests are well off, they will give the newlyweds money. Party officials will give the couple US dollars to showcase how well off they are. Traditionally, many North Koreans have a live hen and rooster at their ceremony. People stuff dates and flowers in the mouth of the hen and red chili in the mouth of the rooster. For North Korean women, honeymoons don't exist. If you are married today, you will be back at work tomorrow as if nothing ever happened. The idea of a honeymoon is an indulgent one, and it doesn't serve the state at all for the couple to take a week off from work or go on vacation. So in some ways, North Korean weddings aren't so different. They still wear traditional dresses, just like in other countries. But in some ways, they are much more regimented and restricted. Many must live in prison. For many women in North Korea, the reality is that they will probably spend some time in prison. Why? The punishments for tiny infractions are so strict that your chances of breaking a rule are very great. Between 150,000 and 200,000 North Koreans are living in prison camps right now. That is according to estimates made by the Human Rights Watch and South Korean government. These camps are surrounded by electric fences. People who commit political crimes will spend their entire lives in the worst camps and can even have their family members imprisoned with them. Can you imagine having to spend your whole life in a prison camp because a distant relative committed a crime? Probably not. But for many women in North Korea, that is the reality that they face. According to a report from Amnesty International, around 40% of the prisoners die from lack of nutrition while completing their work like mining, logging, and agricultural work in these camps. The people are forced to work in harsh conditions with outdated tools. For most of us in other countries, we assume that if we follow the rules, jail will never be a place that we have to go to. But for the women of North Korea, a family member's crimes could send you to a prison camp in no time looked at as bad luck. Women cannot really come and go as they please in North Korea. Well, they physically can, but it's looked down upon. If you are a woman on January 1st, you are pretty much stuck in the house because it's considered bad luck for women to visit other homes on that day. So the women of North Korea must stay in their houses at the beginning of the new year or risk people thinking that they are bringing them bad luck. You probably shouldn't do your shopping in the morning either because it's widely believed that it's bad luck for a shop if the first customer of the day is a woman. Can you imagine being seen as bad luck? That can't be good for your self-esteem at all. What if you had a really busy day planned and needed to get your shopping out of the way in the morning? Would you have to wait for a man to go into the store first so that the shop owner didn't treat you badly? It seems a little strange to think that someone is bad luck simply because they are a woman. How exactly do women bring bad luck to people when they visit them on the first day of the year? And how does that bad luck magically evaporate on January 2nd? We need answers. Fear of divorce. North North Korea is heavily influenced by its patriarchy. That means that the men hold most of the power in society, as well as marriage. North Korean men must go to work early every morning, even if they don't get paid. This is the policy of the Workers' Party of Korea. Because the men must work all day, women must take care of everything in the house. The man's job is to work and ensure that none of his family members are doing anything that goes against the WPK. If the wife does anything against the party, she could be easily divorced. A woman Women who does not have a husband will have a much harder time earning money and feeding her family. So it's natural that even the marriage is not satisfying. Women may be afraid of getting divorced. In North Korea, party ideology is looked at as being way more important than any relationship between husband and wife. In North Korea, men are allowed to be violent toward their wives. The government will not interfere with such behavior. Domestic abuse is quite common in the country because of this. Even still, women are not likely to divorce 
divorce their husbands for anything other than going against party ideology. It doesn't seem like these rules really make for a happy marriage. Gender equality wasn't the best. When you think of gender equality, you probably think that it's a good thing in all circumstances. In most cases, you would be right. But when it comes to North Korea, the push for gender equality wasn't actually based on wanting equal rights for everyone. When China and North Korea began the movement for gender equality, it was so that women would go to work and rebuild the economy after the Korean War. During this time, the women of North Korea worked very hard, but they didn't really reap any of the benefits. When the economy no no longer needed them once again, they were looked down upon for working. They were pushed back into the more traditional roles such as cooking, cleaning, and housework. The only way they could be rewarded for bringing money to the house was if they sold goods to the market. But women who land high-powered jobs or become high-ranking party members are not looked at in the best light. A common old Korean saying says that it goes ill with the house when the hen sings and the cock is silent, which means that it's not good for the woman to be the main earner in the household. So while there there was an initial push for gender equality, it was short-lived and only served the state. Special treatment in the military is not good. You would think that special treatment is a good thing, especially in the army. This may mean better sleeping chambers and more comforts, but for some women in North Korea, special treatment in the army is not all roses. Though no one knows the real numbers, it's believed that there are around 1 million troops in the North Korean military. 40% of them are female. The living situation for women in the military is subpar. For instance, in times of crisis, women will rarely look for shelter among the people who live in the area area because they would possibly be abused or harassed, so instead they must sleep in supply centers. It has also been reported that some women receive special treatment from the higher-ups. They are given free access to goods and supplies, but at what price? Military officers often have ulterior motives when giving women this sort of treatment. When high-ranking officials visit bases, only the most attractive women are dispatched to work in the dining area and infirmary. Commanding officers will even sometimes bribe officials to bring better-looking soldiers to the bases. One defector of the army, a Jungran, told New Focus International that once female soldiers leave the army, they will realize that their basic women's rights were violated regularly. So in the army, it seems like the best thing to do is not accept any special treatment. And that's it for the secret lives of North Korean women. Were you surprised? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.